start and let me see who is on. I will announce. So here we have Jim and Sandy. Welcome everybody, and we have Brian. Hey, Brian. Hello, Max. Uh huh. Next is Hayan. Hello, hey, Hayan. He's muted. Hi, Max. Hi, everyone. Hey, Hayan. Hello. Uh huh. Hey, Nicholas. Let's go, Max. Uh -huh. Hey, Sefira, no. your most. Uh, what was the other word? Uh, most active supporter. There was another word, but you know I forgot it. Dedicated. Dedicated, yes. Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> hey, Sabrina. Hello. Hey, Sabrina, nice to see you. And that's that's all we have. Everybody, welcome. Uh, thank you for your support. We got a bit of donations. Um, what else we got? Uh, Jim is taking uh, requests for channel sessions over telephone and Skype. And some of you have already. <laughs> and thank for your overall support. And I invite Jim to start. Let's see how it works. Like that. And uh, that's about it. I got a nice uh, channel session recorded for uh, poetry. Uh, Penton came and read some poems. Please, everybody, turn the cell phones here and mute your microphones there. Because yeah. if you have sound, even if you are not there, but there is some sound, the screen switches to you automatically. So yeah. if you mute your microphone, the screen would be on yeah, G. If you're not, then it will yeah, jump dark. between people. But when you speak, don't forget to unmute. Are we dark to you? Yeah, no, yeah. That was more um, light before. Yes, yeah, you were a probably dark. a little bit dark, yeah. but yeah. That was light. Better. That's better. Sandy with the light, yeah. Okay. Hold on. All right. If we channel in, you need to set up light. I mean, it was just a minute ago, it was better. Well, the light outside was. Ah, light outside was what? Better. <laughs> but we look dark because we're against the light. Right. right. Oh, okay. No, it's okay. I can do job. I think, I think it's good. Oh, hold on. <clears throat> What's it sound? Microphone? Uh, the, can you turn it off? Not any. I'll turn it off. Why is it not coming up? I think maybe I messed up something there. Oh, you turned it off? No, I don't know. Maybe? Yes, you probably turned it off because it's on a timer. Oh, Liney. Hello. Liney's there. Hi, Liney. Liney. Turn it one more click. Nothing happens. Hold on. Oh. Yes, yeah, small light. There. Nice. Good enough. Okay. okay. Oh, that's much better. Thank you. Now I'm going to mute. That better? Good. Yes, oh, thank you. There's too much space. Lani, hello? I think she muted. I'm going to mute now. Okay. Bye. Hello, everybody. Bye. Uh, can you, uh, everybody, mute yourself except us? Yeah. Okay, I think we're good. We can okay. make it closer. You can come closer if you want. Yeah. We want Jim. Okay, good. Hey. All right, everybody. Can you see us better? Yeah. Now, channel and Jim. See, see you later. Nice to ni nice to see you. <laughs> it was nice to, 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 to chat with you. And sorry for being late today. No problem.
I have decided to visit again. Hello. My name is Buddha. Hi, Buddha. Welcome. Hi. Thank you for coming again. Remember before when I told you about the root chakra and how it was grounding and how I had decided as a child to experience all the chakras in the way that no one has attempted to experience them before. So I became the rocks and the ground and the flowers and the animals and those things that were inanimate. I experienced what it was like to be part of Mother Earth, Gaia, as you call her. And then, still as a child, moving up, to what you call the sacral. I was too young for sexual activity, but yet I could experience the thoughts of what life is about through the Mother Earth, through the multiplying of the animals and the, and the different things that happen within the Earth that cause growth and movement. And even though they seem still much energy. And so as I move up into the sacral, I'm moving forward in my dreams. It's like I am encountering many things and moving through them. And I'm moving through them in a way that Mother Earth would have perceived to see moving through the bushes, moving through life itself, the energy of life within me that causes eventually me to be a sexual being, a person, a being that can multiply, that can be part of the population. And I see that within me. And it is an exciting energy it is an energy that makes me want to understand the body better. And so as I move up through the sacral, there are connections still to Mother Earth. Many, many, many tendrils and connections to the things that I had experienced but yet a brighter light shines because this is multiplying this is growing this is part of our access to the higher realms you may think oh sexuality lower vibration but not what is a lower vibration? Is the root lower to be attached to Mother Earth? A lower vibration? I think not. I think not. It's a higher vibration. Everything can be brought to the higher. Everything can be brought into understanding with the higher vibrations. And so as a child, as I move through the sacral, I began to understand the feelings attached to the sacral were holy, were actually greater than anyone could possibly imagine. You must understand that the creation of man and the multiplication of man is sacred, is beautiful, a miracle. And I was beginning to realize as a child that I could see the miracle without experiencing it. But I knew someday that this would be part of my manhood. But yet, I was growing and experiencing and understanding and being part of. So I questioned many times those who were teaching me about 
the sacral and the understanding of it. As a child, many questions come and many questions are answered and some with difficulty because they were embarrassed to answer. But I forced an answer and they knew that I could understand. So they were willing to give me this knowledge. And I move forward in my dreams, through things, through the forest, even through the buildings and walls. As I approach them, they fall away. And this is part of the understanding. As I began to understand, the things that I were moving through fall away. And I would be given the greater understanding in my perception. Does this make sense to yes, you? Yes, yes, thank you. And, and so, even as a ch child, I was able to understand some great truths about sexuality and the world around me in a, a sexual way and in a way connected to Mother Earth. You must remember that as we move up through the chakras, they are all connected one to another with tendrils and strings and emotions and intelligence and light. All chakras are connected. And so this chakra also opened up other thoughts connected with higher chakras. Why did it do this? Because I was experiencing and asking the questions that would lead me to the next level instead of staying in one place. We must all do this. Many of us, many of you, stay in one place. It is safe there. It is understood there. But to be able to grow and to understand fully what your life, your spirit, your emotions are truly about, you must move forward in a proper order so that you may understand and sense and feel and grow the way you are intended as a human being. Does this make sense yes, to yes, you? Yes, thank you. So move in your dreams. Close your eyes and picture yourself moving forward and pray to God or whoever you pray to that they help you move forward in a way that helps with your understanding and growth as a human being and do not be disconnected from the last chakra as you move to the next. L keep it lit, keep it energized and as you move to the next you are like a tree growing. From the roots you grow into the sky. This has been used many times in teaching but it is so true that your roots have to be firm. You cannot just live in your branches. You cannot just live in your trunk. You must live in your entirety. But first there is roots and then there is a small growth which becomes the trunk of the tree eventually. But our understanding is low when we're down here but yet it is necessary for us to grow in a way that makes sense, that makes understanding grow on top of one another so that we can move straight high. Does that make sense? Yeah. Thank you. I am now going to leave you, but if there are any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. For I, had, as a child, would answer questions as well as ask because I was able to experience things that my leaders did not experience because of my movement in this way. And I explained to them 
that their sexuality was as important to them as Mother Earth's root, as the crown on the head. They did not fully understand at first that they are not sexually dead or not supposed to be sexually dead. Even in their priesthood, there are things that need to happen for them. To be experienced and fully human and fully vibrating in a right way. Are you sexual now? I am a spirit now. Do spirits have any sense of sex? We do have unity. Yes. It is not the same as your sexual experience, but it has much intensity just as it would on the earth. Are you still a male as a spirit? It matters not what I am as a spirit, for we are all one as a spirit. Is God sexual? He created sexual, so he must know about it. One cannot create what one does not know about. Is there a female counterpart for the God? There is anything that you can desire for the counterpart of the God. He has created himself, and he has created those things around him that he needs to help his vibration as well. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Creativity is a vibration unto itself that is far beyond what we can experience on a human level. Are you in communication with Jesus? Yes. What, what? I, am, I am a spirit alongside him teaching and growing and our vibrations mingle constantly. Where is your attention now? Uh, where, what is your main passion at the moment? I visit many worlds, and I come into contact with many things. I am growing as a spirit so that one day I may teach others, as I am doing now, in the, even the higher realms. Is Mother Earth sexual? Yes. Is it a female? She considers herself so. Are any other planets males? Yes. Mars is a male? It matters not which planet is male or female. Is the moon carrying female energy as well? What do you believe, Max? I don't know. I'm open. It has come to my understanding that you do not even believe the moon is a planet. Yeah. Then how could it have a sexuality? Any, oh, moon has a strong influence on us. Yes. So the vibration, I'm talking about the vibration, is it female or it doesn't really matter? It does not matter. How about the sun? It's typically presented as a male, is it right? It calls itself a male, yes. But many spirits and many orbs and many planets can be male or female at will. Not that they change in any way, but their function changes. They react more like a male to certain situations and react more like a female to certain situations. Gaia Mother Earth is a creator of plants and animals and trees. She nourishes them and feels the feminine power of that. But yet, as an ocean, the thunderous power of her weight she feels male in some ways when she deals with the ocean and the creatures within the ocean seem male to her like spawn like the sperm uh -huh. in the sea does that make sense to you? Yes. Uh, the third sex, are we birthing a third huma human se gender on earth? Is, are we evolving into three sexual society? It will. I cannot answer that right now because there are many 
things that affect the answer, and some of those things have not happened yet. And if they do not happen, it will affect the answer. Yes. Um, what about the law which goes, sexual law which goes beyond procreation? It would be the love of lovers who are beyond uh, procreation age, like older people. Sexuality, if grown and understood properly, never dies in the era of the life. It stays alive and can be experienced until nearly the last day. A lot of human activity goes beyond procreation, like contraceptives and females which are beyond procreative age trying to pretend that they are still being able to give birth. How irrational is that? It depends on the vibration and the reason for the activities. There have been moments in your distant past where very aged people have been able to procreate for reasons that were divine. If their reasoning is unselfish and divine and was given to them from a higher source, then yes, this can happen. And this would not be of a lower vibration. However, many of these actions are selfish and do not have a higher vibration and will come to their immediate conclusion when the child is neither full of soul. I do not how to say it. They will have a soul, but it will not be complete. What about homosexuality, male homosexuality? What's the rational for that? It's kind of, a lot of activities there are completely irrational, right? Or not? They are experiencing what they know. This is many times turned negative by views of many different people, societies, and the way it is perceived as unnatural. But for those who are truly homosexual, it is fully natural. Now, they cannot accept it sometimes because others cannot. Accepting themselves becomes the true nature of their journey as a vibration. They must find the acceptance, the truth, and the fullness of who they really are because to be something different than what they are would be a lie and not bring them to full vibration. So therefore, if they feel and are experiencing those kind of urges towards other men, they must decide if that is the truth. And if it is the truth, then they must nurture it in a way that is positive and not in a negative way. They must find the truth about who they are and why that this is happening to them this way. It is not necessarily an aberration unless they make it so. Hello. Hello. Can you I ask a question? question? Yes. yes. Are you a physical being? Not presently. Do you know what will be your future incarnation? I do not know because I have not reached that part of my spiritual vibration to know. I like wish... you, we live our lives in growth and we see things as we come up through and that is the same with spirit. We come up through and our eyes are opened a little at a time. Brian, do you have a question? Lanya, do you have a question? No, I'm fine. I am so joyful to be here. I, have, I, have I, I must tell you that the, one of the things that is lacking on your earth is true joy. And you see, you ask these questions about 
people and their lives and what they are seeking is true joy and if they knew that that's what they were seeking they would find it much quicker okay. I believe that you can bring a vibration to yourselves through the chakras that is unequal to an earthly experience. Uh, Buddha, may I ask you a question? Yes. Thank you. Have you met Reverend Sun Myung Moon in Spirit World? Yes. He, he brings that many blessings to the earth. He brings many joys. He's a joyful man. Mm -hmm. A joyful spirit as well. And his misunderstandings have now all been cleared, but he is joyful and meant well and had great understanding of the human being as it was. Well, he taught that the female organ is the female aspect of God, the sexual organ, and the male sexual organ is the masculine aspect. So... There is a way to bring God into our union, sexual unions, and a lot of sexuality today on the earth is very dark, very low. So I'm not. I get confused between just enjoying sex, you know, as we. See, the perception of sex to. has taken on a low vibration to some, but in order for it to be actually experience properly it has to be of a higher vibration it has to be of a positive movement forward mm -hmm. even in the playfulness of sexuality it moves forward in your lives it cannot become something negative that brings you down and destroys your vibration or destroys relationships it must be done in a way that is in the fullness of the body, the spirit, the emotion. Do you understand? Yes. It is hard to describe to you what sexuality is supposed to be because you are not using it the way it's supposed to be. Oh, sure, you can use it for purely creativity and having children, but there is so much more. It can bring unity and connection to two people that was never there before and love can grow and touch is important to mankind sexual touch and just affection in touch so important to the raising of your vibration everyone needs touched it is part of humanity to be touched you have to have that to help you grow. Thank you, Buddha. Any more questions? I I have more of like of a statement, not so much a question, but Buddha, it's it's really humanity. A lot, many of us are in survival mode. It's being able to become, uh, for us, becoming uh, vulnerable, uh, moving our uh, facing our fears, yes. and. That's the biggest challenge on humanity right now is being able to move out of survival into creating. You know what I mean? Yes. That is why I speak to you of the chakras. Yes. Because many people will not survive living in the branches. Right. They must be rooted. Then they must grow up through the chakras to survive. You see... Survival now is more difficult than some may think. Others, I, I do not know how to describe the yearning for the vibration to move up. To be in a mode of survival is understandable. I put myself in that mode as well. I took myself out of man, humanity and lived in the forests and by the streams for a great while to understand how the nourishment of the body can be done and survive without those giving things to me 
having things handed to me, and I see in your spirit a great light. You are attracting the positive to you, but you must not dwell on the negative, because when you dwell on the negative, more negative comes. When you dwell on the positive and are grounded and bring things up, the energy up from the earth, the earth supplies and the sky supplies because what happens when the, the roots are grounded? The sky then waters and nourishes from the sky and there are things in the air that causes growth. And so, therefore, the sky sees the positive movement and wishes to become part of that. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it's just when we're moving toward a more, I guess, just getting out of our ways, getting out of the mind and more into the heart, you yeah. know, and that self-appreciation of who we are yes. and what we stand for. I mean, coming to a planet and forgetting who we are. That takes a lot of guts and courage on all yes. levels. So it's really finding the love of self is probably yes. the greatest gift. Yes, you are very, very true. You must value yourself, your body, your mind, your spirit, your sexuality. It all must be honored and treasured. It all must be full. And that is how and why I have come to speak to you about growing up through your chakras. Thank you. As we grow through the chakras, uh, does the role of sexuality diminish? Because now we use sexuality in many ways. When we are lonely, we use sexuality to bring people to us. And that loneliness it comes from the survival mode. When we become telepathic, we will be connected to other people in non-sexual ways. So, would the sexuality diminish? It could. It depends on your path. It depends much on your growth and where you move in your life. But sexuality does not have to diminish. It may step aside slightly to make room for other things and movement higher into the realms of understanding but it does not necessarily have to diminish it is part of the base of the tree the sap flowing up through the tree must be there and you may see that as the blood but the semen and the blood are the same when I look at people I often see a different sex than what they are, spiritually. I think maybe past lives shine through and a beautiful female might behave as a male and although she would be straight but she would still be very much masculine and the other way around. Yes. Do you have any insights into that? How? Your past lives do affect the life that you live now in the way that they are the lessons learned or the lessons not learned in your past. These will come to light if you are moving forward, if you choose to repeat the same lessons over and over again you will come back in lower vibrational forms. This is how that happens. Because if you would live a life not learning responsibility over and over again, your responsibility level will be brought down so that you can learn it in a more rudimentary, basic way and be successful so that you may move up again. Does that make sense to you? Yes, thank you. Yes. Uh, how about polygamy versus monogamy? Uh, you know, being uh, truthful to your current partner and desiring more. You must keep your oaths. You must keep your promises. But if you have no promises or no oaths, 
and you experience love with many people, can this be wrong if it is not hurting them or you? There are situations where this kind of love is a very acceptable, perhaps not on your planet. But it is acceptable in the way that if you are pure in your love, if you are not trying to harm, if you are just wanting to connect in a more spiritual and direct way to some people, this is one way that can be understood by both. You may experience each other and learn and grow from that without jealousy, without... I do not know the word here. But it is possible. But you have to be in the, a vibration of acceptance, a vibration of growth, not in a negative, this is just sexual. But this is a connection. Two people are connected. Important, beautiful connection. If it's just sexual and not on any other level, it, it is not really a connection. Uh, Jesus is told to have incarnated on earth hundreds of times since his appearance as Jesus. Is it true and do you also incarnate and materialize on earth many times since your Buddha's... Jesus has incarnated more than once, but that does not mean all spirits do. And that is all I will say. Any more questions? Thank you. Hey guys, you have to unmute yourself if you want to speak. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say something. Uh -huh. Yes. Um, I, I found out, I first learned about chakras about two and a half years ago, and instantly when I learned about them, I that's how I actually began meditating, because before, medi before my idea of meditation was boring, and then I learned that there was a whole separate system in us. Then I learned how to focus on those areas of my body and start at the root and go up, and yes. eventually I it it forced me the more sensitive I got to the energies the more I could feel everyone else's everything their emotions their feelings their physical yes. feelings um, and then it forced me to exude like extreme excitement and then it took it eventually got me to the point where it literally wouldn't allow any of my darkness to stay in me and it all had to come out at once to um, a period of like yes deep depression but then after that after this last through this last year I've gotten past that and now I'm to the point where I literally connect my root chakra to the core of the planet raise it up yeah. and connect my crown chakra to the sun and the energy that I experienced the other night was just the most intense thing I've ever experienced and it literally like put me on my back like I couldn't even and then and it's just it's just helping me look at everything I do in life all the time like just connecting yes. to my chakras literally and most of all my my heart chakra Yes. Just feeling them and sensitizing to those energies in myself awoken yes. me beyond anything I could have imagined. Yes, you have connected your roots to the sky, and you are one beam of light from the ground to the universe. However, now it is time for you to connect the other chakras that move out from the, the heart to gather others in to help them to understand. Now that you have experienced this kind of acceptance in yourself, in your chakras, from root to crown, it is time to expand through the other chakras that are smaller, more detailed in the body. Do you understand? Yes. 
your leadership as a being moves out from the heart chakra, the center of the light beings, and it must move this direction now. You already have this direction, but now you must move in this direction to share these experiences as you are doing right now. Do you understand? Yes. You may help and teach others how to be as aware as you are now, how to feel the joy and the excitement that the earth has to bring as a human being, as a sexual being, as a spiritual being, as an emotional being. You can be a teacher now that you know how to bring these things up in yourself. Does that make sense? You must grow out now. And that's exactly what I felt yesterday. Like it literally that exactly what you said. Like I feel like something told me that now is the time where I'm actually supposed to start teaching people things. And I just that's just, you know, I don't I, I just have to find people that will accept it. The acceptance will come. Do not fear shining your light in a dark place for a non-acceptance. This is not what the light will t has taught you, and uh, you know this as well. But you have to fill up the entire body with this light and let it shine whenever it can. And then you will see that you the rejection and the acceptance will come in a way that you understand and will be able to deal with and in many cases be able to change for a positive outcome. Yes. Yes, I have actually experienced that when I was younger. Before. I cannot hear you. I actually did experience that exact thing when I was younger before too when I went through one, my first, what I would call my first awakening when I was like 18 or 19. But, uh, Much blessings to you. Thank you. You as well. Continue um, on your light path. Continue moving in this direction. Do not forget to spread your branches out. They are tight to the sky, but now they must branch out. I understand. I must leave you now. Well, thank you for your visit. It was Hi. a wonderful session, and we appreciate you being with us. Blessings to you. Blessings. Please do not ignore the feelings that you have because they are important at all times. If you are feeling low, you must understand why and bring up from the earth and down from the sky the energies that will make them transform for you. Because we are transformed on earth into spiritual beings that we began as. The, the journey of an earth person is to find as much of the spirit that he was born with and to bring it out into the earth and feel the joy and understanding as he possibly can or she. Does that make sense? Yes. You have a spirit that you were born with. Bring that out. Find it. Understand it. Love it. Grow it. All right. I bid you great love and excitement in your journey. Thank you. Thank you, Buddha. Thank you for being here. Ah, uh, much joy to you all. Much love. Much love. Much love. Hey. We had a nice session with Buddha. Oh, hey. <laughs>
It was How's good. it going, everybody? Hey, it was beautiful. Very beautiful. You could feel oh. the energy. Very beautiful. Thank you. I have a question about technology. Uh, when I speak like that, is the, is, how is the sound? Is it loud enough? Is it clear enough? It's good. For me. No, if I move it closer. <laughs> is it loud enough? Is it over oversaturating? Do you, is it worse quality? No, is it's it good. This distorted? Is no. Oh, the same? All right, so we'll do close. Okay. Here, so we yeah. So like can can uh, <laughs> wiggle his your leg. Like yeah. can wiggle your leg. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm gonna get something to drink real fast. Yeah, no, no rush. Um, no rush. I need. After any session, I usually am very, very thirsty. Discussion is open. Whatever you want to say. I was going to yeah, ask him. Yeah, go ahead, Sophia. No, no. Go ahead. no, no, it's okay. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say it's uh, it's an honor to be with all of you, a lot of uh, light workers and just people working for the benefit of humanity, the ground crew. And uh, I just it's an honor, so thank you for just being thank a part of this. Thank you, Brian. Brian, Brian uh, please, yeah. can you give us at least some specifics? Uh, except seeing your head, I don't know anything about you. Can you <laughs> You know something about your interest. My interest deals with just um, bringing groups together and working together and bringing about uh, putting differences aside and bringing more of a unity base. Um, working, getting out of our fears, getting out of the mind and more into the heart. Um, bringing about a sense of letting go of attachments, things that do not serve us. You know, serve us as individuals. Um, just work. It's it's tough. It's a challenge because a lot of us are in survival mode, and just bringing that which we know and just not being afraid. That's the thing. The biggest fear on this planet is what other people think, and that's can, hard. Can you give me something tangible? So far, it is so untouchable. It's so general. Can you, you give? Want, you mean your favorite blue. color? Oh, blue. Automatic. Right. Blue. <laughs> 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 it's not like, you know, good feel. Uh, how do you? What, what fears? I mean, what? Uh, are you? People are saying that you're. You know, what is uh, something that you know tangible that you experience, and how do you deal with that? The fear of family members. Um, uh, you know. Allowing them to speak, just being in the state of allowance. So, family members who, kind of like my family is a very, uh, very background, very Catholic. Oh, and here's so, something specific. Thank you. So it's <laughs> it's Catholic, but me, you know, when I got graduated from high school, I kind of let go of that because I wanted to expand. <clears throat> You know, you have a separation groups. I wanted to expand that. I wanted to move beyond that because I saw it as nothing against the churches. I love the churches and what it represents, but it was too, parts of it seemed like too ritualistic, a certain element of control, not allowance more. But I love the beauty of singing. I love the churches and what it represents, but there's still this, still an emptiness within me. I want to know more, you know? A lot of us do. Oh, yes, I agree. Uh, let me give you a little bit uh, on that. You sh appear to me as an extreme in allowance, an extreme in allowance, at least in the first appearance. Uh, Bashar was some well, once asked about, I think about buffalo or some other big animal, in, you know, big, um, you know, what is bigger than buffalo? There was uh, Elephant. No, no, like the, the same in, in in North America. There was uh, uh, a bison. bison, bison, yeah, bison maybe. <clears throat> Why did they allow to, to to kill themselves? And he said the main idea of the maybe bison or someone and another which went extinct in uh, when when whites came you know, a few centuries ago. He said uh, allowance. They were in complete state of allowance. They wouldn't run away because they allowed anything. They would stand and they would be, be shot at and they wouldn't run away. They were the biggest and they were in peace with everything. Yes. Uh, you know, that is nice, but, you know, 
being a sadist is always important. You know, when you allow everything, then you sort of repress your individuality. And it's so nice to just you know, being able to express whatever you are for real. You know, being in love is one of these cases when your partner, especially falling in love, you know, the first romance, you can listen to anything they tell about them, and they can listen with attention to anything you to tell about yourself. You know, being in that state when you really discover who you are, when you, for the first time, tell, I love blue and I love chicken nuggets that sort of thing <laughs> and I hate you know mustard and, and you just, just until you pronounce it you, you don't really know and then you know as you grow you, you discover more about yourself so being in love with, with yourself and being able to share with the world what you really are is so important so please be more specific you know, I, let you express what you really you know even the fears you know what what is your fear um it used to be more of acceptance. Um, just I be I used to be an introvert, you know, staying uh -huh. behind the scenes. And um, pretty much through my high school years, I was like that. But uh -huh. the fear right now is, I don't know. That's a that's a good question. I just I, I never really think about it too much. Um, Where are you at right now? Are, what city are you in? I'm in Lafayette, Indiana. Lafayette, not far, not far. Lafayette, Indiana. Okay, uh, you're on the si same time zone as us. No. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Are you? I, yes. Uh huh. Oh, okay. I was surprised that, to hear that. Okay. How do you like it out there? Is it is it well, enlightened out there at all? It's good, but this has been the worst winter. I think. Oh yeah. Everybody. We're this... here as well. <laughs> I, know. Let's, 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 no, I don't, you know, don't anticipate any any warmth anytime soon. Let's have <laughs> snow every day. Accept that. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Somewhere on Earth there is summer. I'm sure. <laughs> Maybe in Australia or Ecuador or something. Oh, okay. So we'll travel. <laughs> no, no, I accept that. Whatever. <laughs> we accept that. It's been actually it snowed here today. So. Oh, we have someone new. Hello. Who, who is that? Uh, someone new. You just a lady just popped out and then it disappeared again. Okay. Who else new would join us? Can you introduce yourself? Hmm. You have to unmute. Yeah, you have to unmute. Yes. Okay. Whatever. Oh, it's okay. Any more topics we discuss? Shy people. <laughs> <laughs> Max, I would like to share something about acceptance that you were just talking about. Uh, I have certain experiences in my life with God and with Jesus and with the spirit world and with various situations. And those experiences are just part of me. They're like a core of a certain kind of beyond just intellectual belief but knowing. At the same time, I keep myself very open for a new understanding to expand my experience. So... It is possible to stay in one place, like the Baisa, <laughs> who just know, you know, know things and know who they are, and at the same time, you know, to be ready to run and expand and, and grow. So that's how I see it. Like if you can imagine a core and then like a, um, like a spiral around the core, you know, just expanding. Okay. But that core okay. is stable because of experiences. Yes, like, yes. Isn't that Kundalini? Okay. Not necessarily, but could be. Yeah. Well, yes. I'm talking about having a core of belief, of belief according to experiences, and yet being willing to always be accepting and expand one's experience and knowledge and truth. I have been a part of several spiritual and religious movements and metaphysical and, and, and. So some people might say, oh, you're so open, your brain is falling out. But it's it's not that kind of openness. It's more like, what I know of the truth right now is going to be different in a month and two months and three months. So I never say this is the truth, okay. no matter which you, religious you experience I'm part of. Really but okay. at the same I, I, I completely, it's yeah, the I same model with me. Basically, the problem you are solving, how do you accept everything without dissolving yourself? Mm -hmm. How do you be yourself and accept at the same time? You have to have a barrier. It is me. Yes. It's just being yeah, the observer. No matter what happens, I'm true, true to myself. I'm not dissolving in that. I'm accepting, but I'm still... So there is a barrier. That's me. And 
that barrier is called ego mind, ego, ego mechanism, at least according to Bashar's definition. Mm -hmm. So, you know, its duty is to keep yourself whole even if you take in everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the best meditations, and you can do it at any point of time, you know, except when, you know, you have to do well, other stuff. You can just observe, you know, you're getting bored, and then you kind of destroy this. Uh, pull yourself out and look around and just take it in and breathe it in, smell it, sense it in a whole, all possible ways and absorb. And that absorbance, how beautiful it is, even, you know, if it is snowing and uh, the cold wind and all of that. <laughs> you know. Max, Max, it's, yeah. it's, being, it's being the observer without judgment. We judge yeah. so much. The littlest things, it's just being present in the moment consciously all the time, observing our thoughts, our emotions. That's hard. That's hard. <laughs> no, it's easy, yeah. No, it's it just all the time. It's, 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 hard. Hard. it's, it's hard a mental exercise. All the time, yeah. It's a mental exercise, it's easy. It, it is. It's an easy like mental exercise, but it's hard to do in the real life because yeah. distraction <laughs> is everywhere. Especially in the dental <laughs> office when you get your feeling done, when dentist drills you, you know, just get, get out of your body and say, I'm not the... Well, you know... I do that. When I go to the dentist, yes. they they are amazed because they do hardly use anything on me and I can I do not I can take the pain away and they're they're amazed. So and I, do, I tell them it's Reiki. I do a Reiki <laughs> I do Reiki on myself and I do not feel the pain and they're amazed. And they love when I come. It's like, oh we don't have to use any medication. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. like he's getting women. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jim, can you come with me? Jim, can you come with me to my next dental appointment, please? <laughs> just sit next. Well, they use a little. They they can't not use any, but they just use the <laughs> smallest amount that they're allowed to use on me. And it, she goes, "You never move or flinch or anything." She said, "It's amazing." <laughs> So. Uh, and another thing, Safir, you mentioned was that, that core, how you make it strong. Pain, of course, is pain and depression are usually, not always, usually the tools which build that core. When you get through experiences and you get through tragedy, your core becomes hardened and, uh, and that kind of protects you. If you use it in a positive way, you can get also you get all kinds of fears and uh, uh, traumas, but also you can get stronger from from mm -hmm. from uh, mm -hmm. working on your your traumas and becoming stronger. So, mm -hmm. so so you know, all these pains can be used for growth and becoming stronger and being able to accept more mm -hmm. without being uh, dissolved and destroyed. Mm -hmm. Self rake and rake also really helps. You know, when I can take on myself a lot, and uh, and then ju just go to gym and ask for rake. And lately, <laughs> I do it a lot. And, and I go to reiki share where we get last reiki share. Uh, reiki share. I got mm -hmm. wonderful treatment by several people. It was just amazing. It was amazing. After that, though, I I seen that I took more uh, harm on myself than I should have. But again, mm -hmm. it worked well. It worked well. Basically, you take more on yourself, and then you learn how to clean yourself up and release it. Healing foods, garlic, uh, turmeric, lots of other things like mm -hmm. smartly used tomatoes and ginger. All of that is allows you just to yeah. clear all that nonsense from yourself. Yeah, clearing yourself through all possible meditations, foods. Did they say drugs? No, no drugs. No. But but you know, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking uh, smartly, like once in century, also allows you just to mm -hmm. melt yourself and remold again. But next morning you have to work on assembling yourself well, again. I love I love garlic, but you don't want to be around me if I'm eating a lot of garlic. So. Unless two people are eating it together, right? Yes, yeah, okay. because I 
ooze garlic. So, but I love it. It's wonderful, and it is cleansing. It's so. really funny because you say turmeric, and I've been yelling at my girlfriend because she cooks everything with turmeric now, and it stains everything. It makes all like, the pans yellow. I'm like, I'm like, I just don't even want to see it. It makes all the food yellow. The shepherd's pie is yellow now. It's like, uh, <laughs> I discovered that this thing, you know, when the summer comes, just get outside, and the sunlight kind of dissolves it yellow. It disappears. Also, turmeric is good, but not all the time. It kind of it works as a preservative for you. It preserves you, but you need to um, at some point you need to expand, and turmeric is sort of keeps keeps you together. So I I recommend um, turmeric week and then no turmeric week on something Hello. like that. Can you hear me? Rowie. I hear somebody. Hello. It's Rowie. Can, Can you hear me? I hear you. Good. Uh, I recommend curcumin, not so much turmeric, because uh -huh. curcumin mixed with bioprene is much more effective. And oh. you don't have to stain everything, and I'm a big cook, and I understand this problem. Oh, wonderful. What is it called again? I will post it on the site. So what was that combination for everybody? Cumin? Uh, Curcumin and bioprene. Bioprene. Bioprene is basically pepper. Pepper. Bioprene. I didn't know that. Thank you. I learned something today. So you learned that Indian food containing cumin, turmeric, and hot pepper is well balanced. Okay. But you can buy them together in a capsule, and it makes it a uh, very. Uh, it's very, very, very powerful. Uh, the bioprene enhances the curcumin. And the problem is turmeric only consists of 5 to 10% curcumin, so you're not getting all the benefit from it. Oh, okay. Just eating okay. turmeric. Yeah, I went to my uh, Indian herbalist. Actually, I posted his uh, uh, chant, Indian chant singing on, 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 on the uh, channel, on our channel, Human Colony. So his name is Starji. Sanam Tarji. Sanam Tarji. He diagnosed me with using uh, Ayurvedic uh, diagnosis. Basically, my stomach is completely upset all the time because I take so much on myself. But, you know, that's my stuff. So he recommended lots of Indian spices except the hot, you know, the hot ones. So I cannot use your advice. So he said it completely excluded uh, you know, coffee, tea, hot stuff, and... Uh, eat everything cooked, which was very oh, exactly. unusual for me. I said, you know, how about vitamins? He said, for you, he said, you know, cooked is you will get more nutrients if you get cooked, even if you if you get, if you kill the uh, vitamins by cooking, it still for you would be better. So, so uh, I really recommend either Chinese herbalists or uh, or even herbalists. I think it is a essential part of our self healing, which uh, is missing in Western culture. Uh, my, my grandfather was a herbalist, and I kind of knew knew that from very very beginning, and I paid attention. And it saved me. For I'm years. doing a detox now. Uh huh. And uh, I'm 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 going to start to. And I would really like to. If you're not going to channel anyone soon, I would like to. If you could, um, you know, share some uh, insights on that. Okay. As, yeah. Would be very helpful. Thank you. You will share insights. Or we want us to share insights. No, no. If you can uh, share your, yours. On what? Please. Oh, on what subject? On cleansing. On cleansing. cleansing. Oh, sure. we can speak for many many days about that. <laughs> you start. Um, no, you start. Cause I'm, uh, uh, all right. Uh, it really depends. First, you diagnose yourself. You have to analyze you know, what's wrong with you. Cleansing can be of many different kinds. Uh, I start with mind because I'm very mind-centered. I'm very analytical. So for me, I ask the question, then I do meditation. And Sefira, can you mute my, your microphone? Uh, unless you speak. Or it was my, my problem. Yes, sir. My microphone is muted. 
Now it wasn't, but yes, now <laughs> it was before. All right. Okay. So I do my meditation and I open palms like that and I ask a question: What do I need to do? You know, or uh, more specific questions: You know, where do I need to clean? You know, what's my major fear? I mean, one of the typical questions for for cleansing is: What is my major fear right now? What am I afraid of? Is it? And I think it's yeah. It's how it works, you know. What's my major fear, and what, you know, why am I, why, why am I angry? These are two main questions. Why am I angry right now? What, what am I afraid of? I start with that. Okay, my, I do a different. I start in a different place now that I, I'm, a, I know Reiki. I start with the the white light, and I, uh, I do uh, the Reiki masters symbols and bring uh, clarity to my being and and I uh, try to um, just dwell on the positive things and move the things that are not positive outside my body so that they're not there anymore and then I I cleanse them away with a breath of air so uh when I didn't, after I identify what's my major fear, I accept it. Try to accept it. You know, I'm afraid of snakes and uh, insects spiders? and spiders. You know, spiders. So at some point, I was brave enough. Brave enough I brought some tiny uh, uh, anoles. Um, they're like geckos. They're the repti reptiles, and they lived in our house for half a year. I think it was a great healing experience. Uh, we kind of they took care of them and expressed love to them. So accepting is part of healing. And then you know, let it go in many ways. In terms of chemical healing, chemical cleaning, uh, some days you would do very low fat vegetarian diet, low sugar, low fat, everything is kind of pure veggies, cabbage, carrots, and rice. I think, you know, when I'm completely overwhelmed with information, when I need to clean myself, you know, I get on on a on soups made of to, out of cabbage. Or it was, you boil rice separately, and you boil cabbage, uh, carrots, and non-fat non fish like whiting, like uh, and, uh, and you just eat that soup all day long and drink it instead of tea. That that is my recipe, and no spices whatsoever. So that's one of the cleaning di diets which work great for me. Um, on the other hand, if you get a real bad experience, like you got something which is was just traumatic experience, I would do just the opposite. I would do hot pepper, alcohol, uh, garlic, lots of garlic, and some other spices, just to kind of hit yourself and flush it out. But alcohol, you know, makes you, takes you apart. You melt you. So if you want to stay strong, if you expect more challenges soon, so you don't want alcohol. If you are in a family situation where you are not safe, I would recommend just cut out, cut out alcohol because you have to be really safe and you really have to melt yourself, you know. Be, allow yourself to be melted. You know, if, if you're in a safe situation and you can, and you need to kind of rebuild yourself from scratch, then alcohol kind of melts you. But if you're not safe, alcohol makes you vulnerable. So I wouldn't recommend that. Any more comments? Uh, is anybody coming through? There might be somebody coming through. Thank you. Thank you so much. Max, that instrument that you're playing, what is that called again? Tank drum made of made out of gas tanks. You look for tank drum on eBay. Okay, that's a beautiful instrument. I love the sounds from that. Yes, it's great. I love it.
Uh, hello. Lakesh. Yes. Welcome, Lakesh. One moment. Who is here today? Greetings, Lakesh. This is Brian. Hi, Lakesh. Hey. Hello. Hey, Lakesh. Hi, Lakesh. It's Major Lee Brown, Rovia. Hello. Uh, Katie, Ayan, Lani. You didn't say anything, but she's around, Brian. Ayan. Uh huh. Do you have an experience that you would like to share from this week? Ayan. He might have stepped out. Sabrina, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm at work right now, so I can't really talk. All right, that's okay. He's at work, he can talk. Ah, I understand it, yes. But you did have an experience this week, am I correct? Yeah, a lot. With meditation. Yes. I wanted you to share that, but if you are at work, that is fine. We'll do that some other time. You can type if yeah. you like. You can, uh, somebody can read it out, but that's okay. Maybe some other time. Is there any questions for me? I, I would just came to answer a couple questions. There was one, and I wanted to share his experience, but that is okay. Okay, thank you for your consultation. Uh, many things that, that you said came through about my visit to Toronto. Oh, very good. Thank he was the same as I said. In some ways, yes. There were specifics which were excellent matches. Lakesh, may I ask you a question? Of course. Hello, nice to see you. It is Safira, yes. Yes. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I always have a question for you. Yes. So, recently, the animals have been leaving the Yellowstone Park area in large numbers. Yes. And the huge caldera uh, inverted earthquake there. Uh, does, yes. Do you know, have you heard any news about whether that area is about to explode or not? Or can it is a volatile area, yes. It, I don't know if you realize that it was the site of the largest volcanic eruption ever to be on Earth. Mm -hmm. It was incredibly large, and there's still much, much volcanic activity there. And this is why the animals are leaving. They sense that there are earthquakes that are going to happen there, and they are sensing perhaps volcanic activity as well. And if you will look, there is more activity in the park these days with steam and heat. Mm. The temperature has risen there several degrees. So can our ET friends prevent a, a, a really very, very destructive explosion there, or not really? They ha can put some things on pause mm -hmm. indefinitely, but if they were to stop that, it would, it would happen very quickly. But let me, let me tell you, they are helping with seismic matters. Mm-hmm. That is why you do not hear from Dizdu or Rojo or Tepe at all hardly anymore is there so much happening in the United States and the North American continent mm. that they cannot discuss and they are busy taking care of. It is very, it is the center of attention on the earth. Right mm. now is the United States. Okay. There are many things happening, even greater than the warlike sentiments on the other side of the earth. The mm -hmm. earth is going through some very vivacious movement right now, and the United States is the receiver of most of that action. 
Other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I just want to say hello, Lakesh. Greetings. It's nice to uh, it's nice Greetings, to hear from you, Brian. Thank you. Um, good to see you. Good to see you. Hello. And who was that? Lakesh. Uh -huh. yes. Sabrina. Sabrina. Can yes. You? I have a question. Yes. I'm not Hello. quite familiar with what kind of thing you actually answer. Yes. Um, but during a meditation a couple of years back, I yes. st started speaking another language. Yes. And I'm still able to do it. And I don't have to be in meditation, but I don't quite know what it is, what the language is. Do you recognize any of it at all? Not really. I. By now, what happens is that I can't actually have a conversation. Somebody please turn off your microphone. I can hear you. So, so I can actually speak the language now and in a conversation even say it like um, ask for something in the language but yes. I don't know what it is I don't know what the language is yes you're speaking Pleiadian yes you're yes. speaking Pleiadian listen to the Karaya channelings he spoke a lot of Pleiadian there you might recognize it yes Pleiadian yes one one culture of Pleiad yes, you should be able to recognize it, yes. And it is not totally unheard of for the humans to get that during meditation, yes. You are a hybrid person, so you will be surrounded by those of those that are observing you. So it is not you probably originally heard a conversation during your meditation because you become much more sensitive to hearing those things which you cannot hear in your everyday life. Yeah, because now it's it's normal. I can just speak the language. But you do not know what you're saying. No. Most of the time, no. Sometimes I am. Like, I'll ask, like... like if I'm cooking, I'll say, can you pass me the tomato in the other language? Oh, okay. Do you recognize this? En, al, eat, ruo. Do you recognize that? No, I can speak the language now if you like me to. Can you speak it now? Yes. Um, as koso no bo, olo koshi di el andi atakas katanda no bako olo koshi yatatata sata. Anda soko loko ye yo tu asata la di andanda soko to asalan di yo su. Do you know what you said? No. <laughs> <laughs> it was entertaining. <laughs> you said that I don't know what I'm saying, but it comes very naturally to me now, and I can speak it any time at will. Oh. <laughs> Synchronicity with a capital S. But, but what language? What 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 is it like? It's Pleiadian. It's a dialect of Pleiadian. Yes. Oh. It on some errands. Some errands speak that dialect. Yes. Oh. Okay. Because there were two other languages too that it seemed yes. like I get like downloads. And yes, and I start speaking. So, Pleiadians can speak probably three or four different languages. So you might get a mix of languages, yes. But what you said there was that you you can speak it at any time at will. So, and you don't know what you're saying. And I have no idea. I do not know. I will. Could, I could ask how you know the language. Okay. It came to meditation, but there might be those around you that might be just coming in slightly and helping you with the dialect. I would okay. think that. But you definitely have speaking it very well. 
Uh, can you converse in uh, that language? Sabrina, can you start speaking in that language and let Lakesh converse with other part of you which speaks that language? And then ask her how does she know the language? Okay. Slow, do it a little slower. You're, you're a little slurry on some of the words. Okay. Um... Dosko on the Ashala, Agatoko, Otoko, Sonda, Ayashata, Ala, Andanda, Agasha, Tuo, Loko, Askia, Tata, Tosso, Koton, Bandia, Shata. You were okay. Do you want to know what you said first? Yes. <laughs> you were asking God if He would give you the answer to the question of where this language has come from. Oh, okay. Because I. See, I thought I got in my head God. Yes. Okay. And and that that much I got, but I don't get like the full fledge of every yes, word. You were, you were asking God where this language comes from and how you were able to speak it. So I will answer. I will first talk to the Pleiadians that are around you because they are there. Okay. Yes, exactly. They help you with the language. It will be important. One there's more you have to say. It will be important to your future. Yes, more. Now, that's it. Yes. You had to finish the phrase. It was broken up there. Um, they, it is important for your future to know this language because they are considering you for the colonies to take you there. Okay, that's... You know nothing about the colonies, but they know about you, so... <laughs> okay. And so the language is for that? Is that what... Partially that. You seem to have... Let me explain something. They've told me that you have very good social skills. You, you are very good at communicating with others. You're very successful with getting your meanings across. You're very successful with making people understand p points that are um, difficult to understand. This is a very big importance to them because you may be speaking to other aliens that and with different protocols that will be very sensitive. But yet, you will be able to be sort of intuitive, if you will, with them. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Yes. I yes. thought it would. Yes. Yeah, it's... Blessings to you. Sabrina, Thank can you. I ask you to count from 1 to 20 in that language? Try that. Okay. Haska and the Ashia Aloku at the sea and the Akaski and the Shoto Scala Alanda Shokotom Banda Ayetia Ashitia Totoputsko. That is a different dialect than I was speaking to you at first because my the 20 that I counted to was different. I counted to four. And it was different, a different part of the dialect, actually different part of the language. However, okay. there are some parts that are very much like this, the one that I was speaking to you as well. So it is interesting that more than one form of the dialect is present in you as well. Mm. She did numbers, yeah. and then she, she said something which wasn't numbers. What did she say? Yeah. yeah. That's it. Uh -huh. She said, oh, that's oh. it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Well, that's the, that's the thing because it's it's a bit, you know, because I'm able to speak this language now for a couple of years. Okay. Sabrina, uh, let me ask you one more thing. Um, I wonder, answering that language maybe, uh, so you, the other part of you which speaks that language, are you Sabrina or are you your Sabrina's higher self? 
Are you the supreme subconscious? Asko tu londo o skotu alanda dia takatia sokoton no palia asia loko skoton banda di yo si alandia um skolo koloko skati anda at skiala nanda puko shale yo tu oskuota anda pakala kataka akaski o to koto panda asi Yes, the explanation is not simple. What you had said is that some forms of the language come through at one time and other forms come through at a different time. However, there are some moments that the language is mixed and it is a, becomes a one language out of two or two a, a one language out of three. So, yes, you have been getting a link let me, one moment, just a moment. Did you get to get run? Kota shata me at a yin no asish and the bait here at the people Roto. Skala su. So kata. Takata skondoma. University. Eshi atu koskotopa. No kut rasiti bausin de bitiara haragata sanda to koshoti ame. What we are saying is this. Hold on. We are discussing how the language comes through. You feel it. You do not feel anything. You just are able to speak the language. However, I am telling you that as it comes through, you, you do not feel anything, do you? <coughs> no, no, you feel nothing. Uh, you feel nothing. You it just comes through to you, and this is because you are you are able to be cha able to be a channeler. Um, Can I add, ask something? I'm not. You know that you, you are able to channel. So um, this way, they can get through to you just to speak the language. They are not decided if they want to channel with you at this time yet. They would prefer that you learn the language. You will know what you are saying when you get there. If you go, <laughs> okay, because because I had started to, um, I, I guess sort of go in a state of channeling um, after that, and I could feel two different entities, and yeah. one was very strong, and after it would come through, I wasn't able to speak for, I would say for about fifteen seconds. Yes. Yeah. Um, I would lose my speech completely. Just a moment. Let me try something with you. Just a moment. Okay. Let me, I am going to see if they channel through you the answer to this question. Okay. I will, you will say the answer in English. Okay. You understand? Do not yes. use the, do not use the alien language. Try to use the English for this. Do you hear anything? No. Give it a moment. I can feel somebody trying to come through, but I don't hear an answer because I feel it on my neck. I asked them to give you a number. Uh, five. Next time you do the experiment, hold your hand behind so I can see the number. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And then we will test. Because I was doing this. Uh huh. Nice. Sabrina, uh, if you go to the colonies, let us know maybe if you're brave enough that you have been there. 
<laughs> also, it would be nice if you could connect to me and we could try a channel in session. Would you, Lakesh, would you recommend Sabrina to channel in English? I, have, I would. Yes. I have tried, but it never comes through in English. So She's not. I, All right. It, you are not quite ready for English yet. They are still experimenting with other languages. Yeah. There are they, three languages that you have actually spoken portions of. One, okay. and they are all different dialects of Pleiadian, and one was a Yi Yi language. So I have oh. a feeling that you are being taught, they kind of downloaded the languages to you, but also they blocked something in you to prevent you from using these languages right now. So there is some switch that they uh, are controlling that they can turn later when they need to. Yeah, because yesterday, actually, I was watching a video about the colonies that you had, because I just started listening to you yesterday. Uh-huh. And for the first time, my phone crashed because I was going to turn it off. Uh-huh. And it wouldn't, I couldn't turn it off until I listened to the whole thing about the colonies. <laughs> yeah, they do to me the thing, same thing. Well, that is because you are being groomed for the colonies at this time, and so you must listen to those. <laughs> groomed. <laughs> <laughs> I know, so I thought it was interesting, especially because I have dreams when it dawned on me when I went downstairs and I have drawn a whole bunch of UFOs. Yes. And I had one where I had I had told my family, I said, there were a whole bunch, there were all kind, different kinds of beings there. Yes. They were not all of the same. Yes. That would be Era. Era has many kinds of beings. There are several planets that have many kinds of beings, but Era has the most diversity, I would say, at this time. Now, do and you where are you from? Where are you at? I'm in New Jersey. Ah, New Jersey. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. I have an advice. A tried uh, channel by uh, channel the languages by writing them down and by drawing pictures. You know. Yeah, yeah. I have I have uh-huh. written some some of. I guess they're pictures of another language. If you get the, I'm going to give you the first four numbers, and I'll eat rule, and see if you get the rest of the twenty numbers. That's one, two, three, four. And see if, in your personal thoughts, not now, but okay. in your personal thoughts, if you receive more numbers. Okay. But that is one, two, three, four. N, I'll eat, ruo, ifi. Also, I would recommend, take it easy. You know, you have been guided. So the, be- the best thing you can do is comply, cooperate, understand, you know, why do you do that? And be healthy and happy. Don't overstress yeah. yourself. <laughs> yes. Just well, do not do not be over concerned with what is happening. I, I know it's just it's been now almost like five years. Yes. So it's it, it, there's me, never been a but there was never a colony up until just recently that would you would be able to do. However, the very fact that you were able to receive them that long ago gives them a, a story of what kind of being you are and what you are capable of. So they are interested. Okay. All right. I, I... This is why I was coming today. There was a reason. There were two reasons, but this was the other. Does anyone else have another Thank you. something? Thank you. You are welcome. What is your name? Sabrina. Sabrina. Lovely. Very nice meeting you, Sabrina. Thank you. You too. Namaste. Successful and joyful. Yes. Is there someone else that has a question? And I feel Sabrina, the... happy grooming. <laughs> I feel there is another question that needs to be asked. Uh, somebody just came. Kathleen came. I have a question. <clears throat> yes. Um, all right. So a week ago, or maybe, yeah, maybe a week ago or two weeks ago, I went outside and it was um, nighttime, and I seen a whole bunch of these stars, and I was like, oh my god, like there's all of these stars, right? 
And there was one out of all of them that really stood out, and it was the biggest fun and the brightest one. I remember I was looking at the star, and all of a sudden, it moves. And I'm like, oh my gosh, is this actually what I think it is? So I have a question. Is that them observing me? <laughs> there is many observances going on at this time. And yes, if you were able to see it, they were observing you. If you many times there are many disguised or hidden vehicles around the earth. You you your planet has sixteen hundred satellites, but for you to be able to see this movement it was an observation then. There was hundreds of them. I even seen like other ones in the corner moving. I seen lights flashing and I was like, Oh my god. But lately I haven't been seeing them because the clouds, I guess. But, yes, um... but now you will see them. They will be I will <sighs> one moment, please. Okay. They forbid me to say what I was going to say. I will tell you that you are being observed, and that is as much as I can tell you at this time. That's all, right. all the reptilians. I have another UFO question, if I may. Um, looking at. I, I would like to ask this question for Jim, because a few days ago, about four days ago, he was outside with a friend, and he saw two triangular UFOs which were sparkling. He thought there was a third one. So uh, were these there to give a message to him or he just happened to see them? Mm. In Rochester, yeah. Mark, this was. There was some things happening there. They were not really observing Jim, but they were there for a particular reason, yes. Can you say there what that is something, There is a a vortex there that they are interested in it, and it was caused by natural causes other than outside forces and this isn't great interest to them and yes they were there to observe that oh here vortex so oh. is it still there Thank you. yes where where is it you will know eventually is it good for us that is what they're trying to discover. Uh -huh. There are some good elements to it, but it has some elements to it also that are unusual. So they are wondering if they, if this is a good vortex for humanity, or even aliens, or there is it caused by... They were wondering if reptilians actually uh, reinforced it to become noticeable. Recently, I went uh, a year ago. I went. I was told that there is a vortex in the middle of the swamp. So I took a, a, a boat and went into the swamp and, and tried to fill it, and there was nothing there. It's not that there was nothing there. It's just you couldn't feel it. Yeah. All right. Uh, I feel that you can give more help to that, Kath, Katyn, Caitlin, uh, girl. Hmm? Can you tell her more? You know, help her. What would All you right. like to know? Oh, sorry. <laughs> what did you say? I can't really hear you that well. Do you have any more questions? How can he help oh. you? Oh, um, I had, yeah, I'm kind of confused with my dreams. And I'm uh -huh. saying this again because this, this one dream I had was really, I don't know, I didn't really like the vibe I got from it. There was kind of good and bad in it. Um, basically, in the dream, I was in my room and there was a grate outside my my door and my door has windows so like this grate was outside my door right and there was this person dressed in black he looked like he was in the government and I was like okay why are these why are they here well and, they side by side the grey and the, the person in black yeah yeah and okay. so they open the door and this gray is trying this gray has like a vaccine, right? And the gray is trying to like stab me with this vaccine. And I, I eventually get out of my house and I'm in the back and um I get beamed up by this uh shift. Shift, I mean ship. And I'm in like a totally different place and I seen this girl. She looked she had blonde hair and she looked like a mother figure or a grandmother 
and she was telling me about them, but I don't exactly remember what they were saying. So I don't know if there's like two types of beings that are trying to communicate with me because I had an other dream of a gray, but it was like holding my hand and it was telling me to, I had to talk to some queen named Azura. I think Azura, I don't know. But it, it was weird. I don't know about the greys. I'm kind of confused with them. I don't know if it was legit or not, but... Do you know where Azura is from? No. It, she was... I believe she's another queen from Andromeda. Okay. But your first dream about the man in black and the Zeta Grey is that the government is using them and they are using the government and I'm not sure why they were trying to harm you but they are working together and when you did get beamed up by the ship you know that you are being protected you see they can't get to you they he could not stab you because you were being protected you can't you could not be hurt by them because you are being protected yeah. and the mother figure was a figure of protection yeah, she was, to to me, she was trying to tell me. She was trying to tell me. We're being protected by the Pleiadians, by the way. Okay, thank you very much. Because the oh. other gray that was holding your hand was the sympathetic side of Yu Yil. The Zeta was the not trying to help, but the Yu Yil war. They were two different types of grays. Did you notice the difference in their look? Um, yeah, I, I think the one that was holding my hand, uh, he had more of like a, like a greenish, light blue. Yes. He was talking to me, and he was like, you can levitate, that's, that's really interesting, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> I didn't really understand, because you just... Yes, he, he was a more friendly type, yes, so do not be afraid of the greys, they cannot harm you, nor the Z Zeta, nor the yu gi -Oh. they cannot harm you. You are being protected, but the Yu Yu would not harm you anyway. Yeah, I'm scared they're not going to accept me into the human colonies because I'm I'm kind of skittish around them. Like, I'd be okay if the Pleiadians would visit me first if I was ever accepted by them. Perhaps these dreams are to also help you to become more familiar with who they really are. Yeah, the like, Yu Yu dream especially. Yeah, I mean, I had somebody. This guy, he was telling me about how he hated the Greys and all this, and I was like, you know what? I love every single race, and I, I can't hate them because I can't just say, oh, they're all bad. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm in a place where I'm feeling love for everyone, <clears throat> and I can't just hate on a race. I mean, I believe that Correct. there's good and... A, a vibrational shift has come to you, and it has given you more love and understanding, and yes... Loving all species is where you should be. That is correct. And I am happy to hear that you are moving in that direction because that is the, the way of your planet for ascension. Yeah, and I think it's really good for humans. And, uh, like, I understand where people are coming from because I was there at that point. I'm, like, I'm really starting to understand people, you know. And I understand if people are scared of different beings that look different. But that guy that was telling me about the Greys, I was like, I can't, I can't just hate the Greys because of their history. I mean, they can change. They can. I believe that not they all Greys are bad. There yeah, are so there is a history with bad Greys, but not all Greys are bad. Yeah. And you have the beginning of telepathy. This is where the heart knows good from evil, the intention of others when you meet them, and you are starting to develop that uh, intuitive feeling and the beginnings of telepathy. Oh, really? That's cool. This is the, how it begins, yes. All right. I, uh, I can feel what uh, she's saying also, Lakesh. It's, m for me, Brian, it was with the reptilians, is learning to love them unconditionally. Yes. I am so happy that you are here today. This is an enlightened crowd. High vibration. Uh, Caitlin, do you have our children around you? Sorry, what? Do you have children around you, the ones which you could communicate with? Um, I have a brother. 
He's four. Uh huh. He's four. Yeah, he's four years old. <laughs> so if yeah, you hear noise in the background, sorry. Uh, to play with your brother and his friends and uh, join that kid kid's playful energy. Yeah. Um, but thank you for everything. I'm really happy. I just those questions were really uh, I don't know. Those just the experiencing that it really it scared me and it made me go in a place where it was like I don't know who to accept because I don't know if I'm being watched by different species that are trying to get me, to me or not. Just be protected. Know that you are protected and care not if who watches. Care okay. not. Thank you very much. I am sending you all some energy today. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Akash. Jaguar? Do you... Duh. Okay. I see the blue light, yes. Oh, is it Lani speaking? Yeah. Hey, Lani. Hello. <laughs> can, can you hear me, alright? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, Lakesh. Yes. Hello? We can hear you, yes. Okay. Um, did I have somebody around me the other night doing something to my back? I cannot hear. Does she have something on her back? No, no. Did I have somebody around me the other night doing something to my back? Oh, oh, I understand. Yes. One moment, I'll check for you. Thanks. How is William? Um, a lot better. Good. A little. Thank you. Did you say a little or a lot? Um, yeah. Much. Much better. Okay. Good. I expect so. They have removed the implant. Oh. Thanks okay. to them. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, thanks. Ah, oh, it was a spiritual visit and not an alien visit. Oh, okay. Um, any ideas who it was? It was a relative, a male relative. He touched your back. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> he has since been passed on, but he is happy that you are moving forward in your work and in your understanding of things. Okay. You are very deliberate about things. Yeah. And he was very deliberate about letting you know that he was there. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, can I ask a question? Lani shared uh, pictures of wonderful orbs uh, around her son. Ah, yes. Is it okay to share those or better not? Those were when they came to remove the implant. <laughs> ah, what was it? it wasn't around his neck, near his neck at all, was it? Yes. Oh, there you go, Max. Behind the ear. That's really interesting. So there was um, a picture with shadows. What were the shadows? I don't know. I cannot see the picture. All right. That's okay. But in general, would it be all right to share the picture with others or not? That would be up to Liney. She owns the pictures. For her, would it be appropriate? She... It is appropriate, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Lakesh, I'll just have one last quick question. Um, yes. You said something about uh, me um, asking about previous life, my previous life. Could you briefly give me uh, my last, tell me about my last previous life? I remember that you had written something about that, but they were not letting me answer that for your last life was not on Earth. Okay. Your last life was in a star system that I am not familiar with. But okay. I am familiar with the beings that you were aligned with in that lifetime. Unusual, yes. Okay, sounds I interesting. Will... 
it does not matter who they were at this time. You will find them. They will return to you later in your life. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Nikesh. I must go now. Thank you for the visit and for your great help. Thank you much. Thank you. Thank you, Lakesh. Blessings. Blessings, Lakesh. And much love and joy. Thank you, Lakesh. Hello. Hi, welcome. 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 Uh, welcome back. Hello, hello. <laughs> I'm a little hello. tired. <laughs> it was so interesting today. Lakesh was speaking a uh, language with Caroline, the Pleiadian language. It was really interesting. Yeah, that was. <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing. We're so used to the things like that. Oh. <laughs> we have still not used to it. It's like listening to two Italians talk to each other. <laughs> I was thinking Hungarian. Any, <laughs> Any two people from another world. Yes. <laughs> All right. I need a glass of water. Uh, I'll be right back. Excuse me. Wow. Yeah. It's actually even more interesting when I do it with my family. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? I, I, I sometimes reprimand my child in the other language. <laughs> <laughs> if he hasn't done his homework. <laughs> did, did you Does he understand? understand? Hmm. Uh, oh, he gets the idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes when I, uh, what's that word, scream at animals, even if they don't understand Russian, I would, I would curse in Russian and scream at the Russian because they can get more uh, adapt to that. It's the attention, not just the language. Yeah, yeah. yeah not even animals, even, even the kid or anybody. If I have to, you know, really be angry, I would scream in Russian. Well, and I think he's, he's also very self-aware. I don't know if... He might be part of the whole thing because he's a teenager and he meditates. Uh huh. Um, and he can see auras. Uh huh. So, so he just will ask me, "Mom, have you tried and channel anyone lately?" <laughs> <laughs> nice. I must let everybody know too that Sandy does past life regressions and she did mine the other day and it was fantastic. So, and if you, you wanna, if you want to get in touch with her, just get in touch with us and I'll give you, I'll get you in touch with her. Can you do them long distance, Sandy? Dolores Cannon's method. Yeah. Can you do them long distance? Oh uh, no. Oh well. I have to wait till I'm in Rochester then someday. Yeah. Yes, um, Zafira is going to come to Rochester. I'm not sure when. <laughs> <laughs> and I had somebody else um, just the other day on. Uh, I was reading a text, and they said if we, if Max and I couldn't come down to see them, they're coming to see us. So pretty that cool. Was interesting. Right. Um, I, my daughter's up, and she needs me for a moment. I'll be back. Thank you. Well, I think we're pretty much okay, done. Right. What do you think? It's all going on one o'clock. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was, uh, all right. Well, oh, blessings okay. to everybody. Right. Thank you so much. It was Thank awesome you, today. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. Thank um, you, Max. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, everybody, for Thank coming. So I hope everybody learned something and got something out Thank of it. You. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Bye. Okay. Love I, you guys. I, I got some answers, so Love thank you. you. Oh, thank good. You. Wonderful. Thanks, everybody. Good. Thank A blessing for all of you, okay? Thanks. Uh, send you out all energy. I think it the catch did that. We need it. Kalas yo to tumba. Oh, have a great day. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you.
You're welcome. Have a great day. Talk to you soon, Nick. All right, Jim. And Brian, I'll see you very shortly too. Thank you. Love you guys. Love you guys. I love everybody too. I'll be in touch, Jim, about our channeling meeting as well. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, hey, Jim, I just want to say, I asked Lakesh, Jim, I asked Lakesh about the UFOs you saw a few days ago. You yes. can ask Max what he said. Where was <laughs> Okay. Um, down here in these rubbers. Oh, okay. Thank you for reminding me. I won't do that. Oh, okay, good. Thanks. All right, goodbye. I'm stopping now. Okay. Blessings. Blessings. Blessings, Blessings guys. Bye. Love you guys. Yeah, I was...